times before, it's the fourth time, and each time is with dancers from the country where the project happened. And uh, here, so we started by an audition in the program of Documentary. It was in February. With this audition, we selected the four dancers for, for the project. And after, we had this room without the walls at the beginning. And uh, we asked, we worked with the dancer in writing a kind of choreography of four hours, asking them to react of what are the dimensions, what are, are the, the qualifications and indications coming from the, the, the space itself. So they had to produce also their, their displacements. They're moving, they're stopped because of some reason. They, they, they wanted to, to write really with the body in the space. At the end of this process, we made the, not the circle, but the periphery, perimeter of the, of the shape. And after, we asked the, the museum to build the walls. So this, this project is a, is a process of uh, using a, a, a space of a museum by the living. And at some point, the museum immediately uh, recovered and circle this, uh, this space with it, its wall, because it's the wall of the museum. So the uh, geography is talking about the practice that also meant the territory, and also talks about uh, the, the target of the museum also regarding what, what is performance and what is the living inside the museum. So it's a kind of acceleration of the process of the museum, you can say that. So uh, uh, I think that, that it would be also uh, interesting to, uh, to ask questions to, to the dancers because they, uh, they started with a kind of ID because we explained the project. So they, they knew that by their movements, they will create their confinement day after day because I will write on the floor that this past month, they knew that they will build this shape at the end. So they, they had, uh, when we started the discussions together, a kind of understanding, projection of what was supposed to happen. And at the end, uh, it, it would be interesting to know uh, what is different, well, what, uh, what are the differences between what you supposed the project was and what is the project right now. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, there was uh, there was a change uh, from the beginning to the end because uh, in the beginning I thought that it would be more difficult for the body, and in the end it was more uh, psychological the problem to stay and do your uh, do the combination and rather than uh, the body practice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would agree on that. And it was also like, in the beginning also we didn't know each other. So we're, four of us, were, as uh, Frank said, we were selected uh, in an audition. We didn't know each other before, so it also became very much about our relationship uh, and how that developed through this time within the work we did in, the, in this uh, space that didn't allow necessarily very much um, improvisation or interaction uh, to get to know like who that person is, but at the same time, it's not an office job, so you get <laughs> there is a lot of friction. And that uh, project also calls to your limits, like it brings up your limits in terms of stamina. Uh, so I think at a certain point, you're also not so much uh, tolerant uh, towards uh, the other person's like uh, sensibilities, <laughs> maybe. I, I want to also to add the fact that it's, of course, it's the, this uh, kind of house of building, but the organization behind is uh, is something really precise, and it's why Angeliki is here because uh, we left Athens after one two weeks. And uh, we would like to have someone to take care about the, the relations between the dancers and documenta and the museum. And also we decided to uh, make a turning of, uh, of the leader 
of the project. So we ask each of the dancer to have the responsibility of the group to, during two weeks and after they change. So this, this person has, has to respect also the, quali the artistic quality of the choreography, of the practice, we decided together that the things cannot move, but also had to, to cool down or maybe to, to talk to, to the group if some problems appear. And, uh, At the same time, uh, we did that in the beginning and we structured and we had like two weeks uh, each one that was leading, but I, I personally don't think it really worked this way. Mm -hmm. It was more shared, like this responsibility was shared between the four of us depending on also how we, uh, how we were like that week. So we didn't really uh, stick to this hierarchy, mm -hmm. like we were more sharing this responsibility. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love that, that Jose, you were away doing Nani, and Jose, the four dancers, so they didn't have la, somebody to control them. Okay, I was there, but it wasn't for that. And so they have to find ways to be responsible, to, how to, say, to find your way to create a relationship in the box, in the structure. And how to, it's like outdoor, how to say, take the responsibility of yourself and of your group also. And find the inspiration, not outside, like I have to push you, but yeah. you have to take to find inspiration with you. In, I don't know if I'm Actually, after a certain point, I that was one. very necessary to continue coexisting here inside the box, I, I think. And uh, as uh, Stella said, we started the leadership thing, but I think it lasted actually for me, and the second one was you. Yes. Yeah, for the two first, uh, the four first weeks. Mm -hmm. After that, it was kind of lost. We all started to participate equally, how to manage things. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was also um, regarding the aspect of uh, the selection we made by the audition. Because uh, when we did uh, the selection, we looked at the uh, the skills, the physical capacity uh, of you, but also we, with Ali, we tried also to recognize some personalities because uh, the project was also to compose a kind of community uh, and uh, personalities that can fit together. And it, <laughs> but we didn't knew you. We had, we had discussion just after the audition for one hour each or something like that. But it was interesting for us to. Uh, uh, know and see who will be the first uh, guy for, for the beginning. And after the second one, there is always someone in groups that comes after. They are not really at the first position, but they appear uh, week after week or day after day. So you are also a kind of projection we had over your personalities because we said Vasilis is like this and we imagine that Vasilis will be the, the kind of base sound that will continue and i think that you were at some point yeah. and uh, no no it, it was also uh, this kind of a uh, of practice also that uh, we have to reflect to make uh, this possible and not and what you say that you work well together without problem without leader shows that uh, the person that is balanced each other's well, we had fights, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Sure. But we didn't have a leader. <laughs> Actually, no fights. I think we had arguments. Yes. Arguments, no fights. <laughs> we had arguments, no fights. Yes, yes. I mean, that there, was, there were some tensions, some days that we were living here, like, uh, okay, I don't want to talk to <coughs> her, but the next day, everything was okay mm. since the time that we arrived here. Mm. Of course, there were argues. It was uh, uh, three months and a half. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of time to be an artistic project. It's a lot of time to see someone three times per week for four hours closed in a box. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's even a lot even if you do a normal job. Mm -hmm. And uh, the conditions here were different. But I think that. Uh, we managed very well to surpass every problem that uh, was coming. Sometimes also it might last just 10 minutes yes. and then everything was fine. 
So I have a question. So what uh, you know, make uh, a difference to be um, in a, in a visual contact with the uh, audience and to be just in a uh, kind of a sensitive contact in that case because we are not uh, uh, completely uh, separate from the audience because you feel, you feel, you hear, you and I guess you you were constantly very aware and very um, uh, sensitive about uh, who was in the space yeah. as the audience probably did. Uh, on, on, on this side. So, but what makes the difference between the, the, the stage that you practice usually and the visual contact that you, that you have? Is there is a uh, very strong difference for you in the practice? Sometimes. Well, I will start with the second uh, thing you said about being here. Sometimes there were audience that you could feel it, you mm -hmm. could hear it, you could sometimes contact with the audience. And uh, in not in a literal way, in a literal way, I mean that uh, you were doing the choreography and you were feeling the response, so it it was like a vibe between you and the audience. And sometimes there were no audience outside the box, and that was a big problem for our energy. It was sometimes the question, why I'm doing that? Nobody can hear, can me. hear me, can not see me, but cannot. Uh, uh, you know, be in touch with the artistic piece. And uh, for the comparison between uh, this way and being in the theater and having the visual um, contact, I think uh, there is a difference, not a very big one for me, but there is a difference to the performer that he has to work with it in order to surpass the thing that I have to be in the same level as being in the theater. There is no the visual contact that make me, makes me an artist. It's the piece. But I think that most of uh, the performers nowadays, because we work in theater mostly, we have, for some, in some way, um, connect uh, our work to the audience, to the visual contact with the audience. And uh, that was a very good um, example to surpass that, to being able to perform without having seen the other the person you refer to. Does it change something in your energy, in your way to, to practice dance? Not to be in visual contact with the, with the, with the audience? A bit. <laughs> uh, for example, uh, in a, in a theater, you can't do this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's not. Uh, it's a dog. Uh, it's it's different because uh, uh, you have the chance to to think to think or better rethink the things you do because doing the same thing again and again and again. And because the score uh, used uh, loops, it's uh, how uh, how you can learn sometimes to to dance uh, saving energy. And for me, in uh, on stage, I cannot save energy. Mm -hmm. And you I think give everything on stage. Yes, you have never. And I learned that I don't have to do it always. Mm -hmm. So I think. In the future, uh, it's for me a lesson how to to dance better, mm -hmm. to protecting yourself, your body, and also to to give the appearance of what you are doing. So the, the, this experience gave you the uh, the same, uh, a more uh, sub, uh, a more uh, sense of what is visual, what is visual, and what is. Uh, from another uh, aspect in there. Yes, and uh, how you feel it. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the way we think and uh, the way we feel when we dance is different. And it changes in where you are, the places, the space, the audience, mm -hmm. the sound. 
Just Maybe that sense uh-huh. is a bit, sorry, is a bit liberating, like following this, also saying like dance as if no, nobody's watching, you know, like that is kind of like, okay, so you're dancing and that's no, no one is watching and that you can do anything you want, like anything you feel like without thinking how you would be perceived mm-hmm. from the outside. But in this case, it is also choreographed. Um, I mean, maybe it heightens very much like other elements of what dance can be, like other than this uh, spectacle. Obviously. Thank you very much. Uh, and how it, this is felt from the inside. Uh, I don't, I don't, I, I, I haven't um, concluded yet to that because there were days that. Like, for instance, you have premiere, and you come here and you give all your best, and then you go out and no one know. like, there is no flowers, there is nothing, there is nothing <laughs> all of that, you know? And that's also part of this joy, like, to perform for the mm-hmm. other. Not necessarily to be famous or to be known, mm-hmm. but to be acknowledged mm-hmm. for what you do. And here there is no, there, there was once clapping mm-hmm. <laughs> from the outside, which was interesting. But uh, this is removed, the open no, the door, not, nobody was there. Yes, it's removed from what you saw. At the same time, it also f- there were days that it felt like I'm doing my office job. I'm going there and I have to do this, yeah. I do it, and I go home. <laughs> uh, and whether there is pleasure in that, uh, sometimes it is because it's also exhausting to be visible all the time and to be performing. It's much more exhausting. Like, this is also protection. Mm-hmm. You know, like, the wall it works also as a protection to the performer. Like, I can, I can be tired and still doing it, and I can't, I don't have to put, like... Makeup? And put yes, <laughs> you know, like, I don't have to smile and feel shit <laughs> inside. Like, I can feel shit and still do it. And uh, so there, there is this type of protection, and that is also liberate in a way. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I don't know. And uh, it was important that uh, what I felt is that we need the audience because sometimes mm-hmm. when uh, uh, the audience uh, react with us, uh, doing this, trying to copy our sounds, uh, we, uh, we feel better. We felt that, that we, we were happier then. Yes. We need them. Like, like you need the connection. You need the connection to the outside. You need to feel that you're doing that not just for yourself. Sometimes you don't also, I think I did it just for myself. But because you have to fall into that, like you can't depend on the other when there's no other thing. Yeah. It's different because when you are in a theater, you try to project yourself outside and show your uh, possibilities, abilities, everything that you can do. And when you're in the box, you try to project the energy, but it's difficult because you can't see the, the, mm. the people that are uh, going around the structure. Mm-hmm. So you have to realize that you affect them. Mm. Yes. Well, yeah. There is also uh, the, the, the frontality is also uh, mm. not existing in this work. So uh, the frontality, mm. frontality, you know. So there is the visual uh, connection that not exists. There is the frontality is not there. So it's a lot of difference with the stage uh, set. So is this frontality also something that uh, for you is? Uh, an important reference in, in the in the way you interact with the audience, or uh, what 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 changed the, the fact that you um, operate in, uh, in this territory without any direction, basically. Actually, for me, it was more like a challenge. But when I say challenge, I mean that. Um, um, let's say about the question, uh, what is art? What I mean is that uh, do we have to have a stage? Do we have to be seen? Or we can um, materialize art in a 
different ways. For me, it was more like a challenge. How can I do the same thing in um, with different elements? For you, is dance a visual art? No, <laughs> not anymore. Oh, that's not a <laughs> well, not, <laughs> a, not, a, not only art choreography, but let's say that for me it's a question to myself that exists before and during mm -hmm. and after that project. Um, for, for many people, make dance is a visual art. But I think that it's more than that. You can take dance and you can materialize that in different forms. So maybe we can say that art, uh, dance is also a visual art and much more. But, but also it's not very interesting. No, sorry. Um, this is a good question, like is dance a visual art? Well, for, for performing, like performing dance, yes, it, ha it is prominently visual in the market, I mean, let's say. Uh, whereas like when you're trained, and, and that's also part of the training, like especially uh, ballet, so you have the mirror, so you engage very much with the visual. It, it's certainly not so much like sound in the way that you learn it, I mean, like you don't, we, yeah, we rarely, like even in contemporary dance, you don't produce a choreography to be heard. Right? In, in the education, at least, that we have. No. You are, it's a bit the contrary, you have not to make noise. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Especially Actually, in ballet. Yeah. Especially in ballet. Not so much in contemporary, but especially in ballet, yeah. You, you really have to be light, not to be heard, like not to make noise. Yeah. So you're trained to do that. Whereas, like, this is a reversing all these mm -hmm. uh, process. And it's, propo like, it's interesting to propose it as a sound art that is also ephemeral, more ephemeral, mm -hmm. so based. But at the same time, if I was asking, okay, is dance a visual art or sound art? Well, it's more like a body <laughs> thing, yeah. I guess. It has, it has both, but uh, it's for sure minimized when we say just visually, and we mostly say it visually, like mm -hmm. in performances. So it's interesting to reverse that, to think of it differently. So could you explain about these drawings that you uh, you did uh, because uh, do you have some time to spend to draw and wh when when was the moment for drawing? Yeah, moment for drawing. Okay. Because it's, it sounds uh, yeah. For okay. us it's a bit, uh, I have drawn the most of them. So <laughs> <laughs> I have to answer so that. You need, uh, you need well, actually, uh, I decided from the first uh, day that. We came to the box officially, not in the rehearsals, mm -hmm. the uh, 6th of April, that I will draw a bird every day that I come in. Okay. So, you gave you so the 10 minutes before, if we started, for example, at 4 o'clock, we were here 10 minutes uh, before. And the first 10 minutes, I was drawing my bird. <laughs> and I have made also some other things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that uh, I did it uh, mostly in the seven minutes that uh, it was uh, there was a, um, a pause. A pause. Every fe uh, uh, fifty-three minutes, we have a seven-minute pause. Okay. So sometimes, yes, I did some picture of some Stella in the world. Tell us about your unicorn. No, I don't want to share it with us, but I can say that uh, it's important that to, to say again that the thing we did was very difficult uh, because dancing about four hours, it was so hard in a white box. Nobody can see you. You didn't know if you were good and the time was a game very crazy and we need to find ways uh, to uh, to deal with that and to, to survive. <laughs> and the, the paint was one way for me to, I don't know, to express, to, to, to take courage. <laughs> it was uh, empty. <laughs> 
uh, while seeing them, some of them are a bit sad. I felt sad inside this box a lot of times. And it was something to, to with express, with the expression because dancers, we express with the body, not talking, not uh, reading, I don't know. And uh, painting was a new way for us. Uh, <laughs> 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 for, for me, uh, my paint, my it's paintings complex. are a bit uh, <laughs> ugly. Complex. Maybe <laughs> and uh, just fill the the gaps, the breaks, the, the seven. But do you have also experience of bowing, bowing piece that you have made on stage? What? Ah, of course. Piece. You dance for piece you didn't like. Don't of like. course. Bowing <laughs> piece that you have. To yes, play. a lot of. So <laughs> is uh, this one a different uh, experience for you because you are not in visual contact, or it, it is the same kind? What is it is uh, different because I have never danced on stage about four yeah. hours. So the duration, the duration is very important. It's very different and, and important. Because imagine to dance four hours like a crazy dancer, <laughs> and the stuff, the score was difficult. It was very hard for the body. Uh, sometimes uh, I. I told uh, them yesterday that I felt like a, a, a hamster yeah. uh, in a box. And we felt like we were four hams uh, hamsters running and doing things. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but some other times you were very mm -hmm. happy. Yes, sometimes. And that was the, the tricky thing mm -hmm. that sometimes we, we were depressed and. Uh, 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 no, uh, Venebra? Not nervous. Uh, 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 angry. Angry. Uh, angry. Uh, we uh, were happy. <laughs> Without reason. <laughs> it was nice to do it. I made a calendar uh, with the dates that we have uh, performances. Yeah. And I did uh, a, a run. Uh, the dates. Like the army in the last days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or like the prison. Or like the prison. Like <laughs> uh, how do you feel connected uh, with the documentary uh, exhibition in general? Did you uh, visit the exhibition and try to see connection with what with your experience? Uh, I did most of them. Mm. Uh, I find it uh, maybe because I was in this a bit different from the other uh, pieces. I could see a connection. Well, but I it was hard for me, so uh, I cannot be a uh, human cause. Object. 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 Actually, it's a bit different with deep space and some other pieces. Uh, comparing to the most pieces of the command is that it's a living piece. And that's a very big difference between the, the other exhibition. Yes, but for example, a film um, like the film of Peter Frieda in, in the um, audio, okay. uh, in which he faced people speaking language that you don't understand and you are just facing people uh, behaving and uh, is it not something that produce uh, the kind of same uh, confrontation? It's funny now. that you mentioned this <laughs> one particularly because I mean uh, it's very recently that I was thinking about this film and the, the, the apes decision to go to the theater mm -hmm. instead of the zoo mm -hmm. you know and I was thinking of myself here and my decision to follow dance to be on the theater <laughs> and not in a cage. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so the ape decided to go to the theater and not to the zoo, thinking that there is a difference between those two. And <laughs> sometimes in here I felt that maybe actually that difference is not so Mm -hmm. uh, or like I was rethinking of my choice um, of deciding to go to the theater, to the Varieté, it says. Uh, like, 
become a performer. Uh, what uh, other piece that you liked mm -hmm. in the documentary? Can I say something before? Mm -hmm. Like you said, they were uh, they were talking in different languages. It's the same. I, I think there is a connection here because we made a structure that was something to us, and it came from our language, our body language. And it was different for the outside to understand our language inside. So there is a difference, there is a connection between the two pieces if you see it from this, uh, from this way. Actually, a question that uh, many of my friends that came here was uh, if what we do inside, not what we do inside, but if what we do has a purpose, if by the choreography we're trying to communicate something particular, particular, I mean, got something certain, if there is a certain la body language that we try to say <laughs> something. You ask the question. No, no, no. My <laughs> friends were asking. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, if I answer, yeah. you. No, no. Oh. <laughs> but also, I mean, generally, very much has to do also with borders and with movement and allowing, like, to mm -hmm. get in and out, who is in, who is out, who gets to, uh, mm -hmm. like, be the center also of attention, who is this happening for, like, mm -hmm. I mean, there are lots of connections also with, uh, uh, we also mentioned yesterday Paul Quen's mm -hmm. work, just outside, like, something that is hidden and you're, Maybe it's there, maybe you realize, maybe you don't, maybe something is happening, something huge, maybe it's happening, some people are working, some people are doing something, and you don't really, you don't, like, someone from the outside never realizes that, and has to do also with the limitations of our perception, but also our openness to voices or things that are not so loud, maybe, like, mm -hmm. metaphorically, I mean. So I'm curious, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, we're talking very much about uh, this piece while it was being performed, but another reality of the piece is that it was for three days, or maybe even a bit more than three days, nobody inside, so how do you feel, or how do you think about this work or this volume you have created in a way um, in this reality? Um, because that's also part of the work that um, for many days, it's a very strange um, wall. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about the wall? Uh, it's it's really as a mushroom in the space, uh, having an influence on all the works around. Um, and a lot of public have encountered mostly that. Mm -hmm. So is that important for you or it's, I don't know. Yes, have you given you. that anything? <laughs> No, the, the space is taken from the, the, the museum because of the practice. It's a uh, it's kind of dimension uh, dedicated by because of the practice of the dancers. So the audience, when they are walking around, are also taken the influence of this shape. And they are at this point composing, or also making their own choreography because of the shape. As a dancer started to interpret and to leave the walls of the space, then the, the visitors leave the walls of the shape. So for this on-off of, of the, the piece, for us, doesn't exist. The piece is always working for the audience or with the dancers inside. Yeah. It's a kind of condition man, given by, by a practice. I, I fully agree, um, um, but still, Till now, when we discussed about the work, we were discussing very much about um, the performance or the inside of it, while I think it has an equal uh, value for the non-happen, or I mean, mm -hmm. for the other sure. Of course, yes, definitely, yeah. but the view that we are um, today inside and uh, also in the in able to speak with the dancer, we focus a little bit on, uh, <laughs> on that, but you are fully right, it's uh, for sure um, for the visitor mostly uh, uh, an experience of uh, facing uh, a kind of uh, 
shape and, and structure of architecture. So it's, it's, a, it's also de very difficult to identify because you don't know if it's uh, an object, an architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's uh, quite complex. And, um, and as a Francais, uh, you feel quickly to be uh, driven by a choreography mm -hmm. around it and part yourself of the uh, score. So think this makes the, the very interesting point of this work. Um, Would you have considered to do it six days per week? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it mm. cannot be. No. The body uh, will be destroyed, <laughs> first of all. And second is, I don't think uh, psychologically uh, you can uh, uh, afford it three mm -hmm. times. It's also interesting, interesting, an empty box with no people. It's uh, sometimes you, you can imagine and don't see any people around making noises. You can free your mind. And, and there is also some hesitation of the audience when they hear some sounds. They can interpret that dancers are, in, are inside, but maybe it's someone walking around too. So this uh, composition of the piece is also made at some points at every moment also. But I like the, the, the image you gave by a mushroom <laughs> inside. Yes, because um, it's a kind of surprise it wasn't here yesterday and suddenly it's here. And it's a question. Uh, the, these walls, as every walls, are always a question. And it changed. Of course, we speak about that, the habits of the dancer, and because of this world, they don't understand that to change everything. But also for the visitors, when they come inside and they open the door to a wall, that is uh, no possible, there is no possibility to, to see why this wall and what's inside this wall is also the question. So for us, the, the idea also of geography was to problematize the, the visual. Mm. Because uh, the visual is, a, when we are talking about performance, it's a, uh, mostly a simplification. And by cutting this aspect is uh, to make the water go in, a, in another way, through other paths. So it was also this fact to interrupt really strongly something for both, for, for the artist and the experience of the visitors and the artist are here, not simultaneously maybe sometimes, but they are the guys of the, of the situation, the audience and the artist. Yes, I wanted to ask uh, how you see performance and dance in the context of the gallery space. For example, uh, a year ago when I was in Tate Modern, they, they had uh, sort of performances within the context of the gallery, but visible, and that was something they curated as part of the you know, public program. So is, is this, does this start from the dance element, the performance, or is it something that has to do, as you said, with the gallery and, and perhaps sound? It also reminds me of uh, raw materials by Bruce Nauman, this idea of using the sound to actually uh, shift the attention and movement and then chart that within the gallery space. So this work, what is the genealogy of this work and how does it, Kind of fit into other um, practices or artworks. Uh, yes, the, the genealogy um, can be seen uh, in a lot of references mm -hmm. in the art because you know you have this famous work of Marcel Duchamp, Abri Secret. I don't know if you know this, this ready name. It's a, it's a, like a, two. Uh, it's like a box in, in which you put something inside and you don't know what is it. And uh, you just understand uh, what is it inside if you move it. And it's one of the first ready-made that produce a conceptual uh, process. So it's really the birth of conceptual art. And he was doing this as a, as a process to make understand, uh, understandable that uh, visual is also something that you produ produce conceptually. There is another piece of uh, uh, Robert Morris, which is uh, the box uh, 
with the sound of his own making, which is a box gilded, uh, and inside the box he put the, the recording of the, the the construction of the box. So it's it's a way to uh, loop uh, the, the the process and the and the sh and the object. So I think here we have kind of. Um, way to uh, articulate the, the process of dance, uh, of choreography, and the materialization of the shape of the choreography through these walls and through this perimeter, because every choreographic piece uh, defines a shape, a floor plan, <laughs> I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this, this is the elevation of this floor plan, and then, uh, a way to uh, uh, to redistribute uh, the, the the sensible uh, interaction. So I think it's it's really about what's uh, punk. It's about the, the, the re redistribution of the sensible um, interaction, uh, visual, sound, uh, vibration. Uh, Intellectual, and so, but they just do the same as uh, as it exists, but they just um, amplify some aspect, completely uh, avoid some other, and uh, it's it's just a, a way to to do like this. Time. So, uh, so that's to transfer to you about the uh, the genealogy in in. Uh, but it's also coming from a work we did before. And uh, it's a cycle called X event. And it was a series of different actions that were produced inside the uh, exhibition space, inside the museum. It was in 2005, so it was a long time ago. And when we observe also this action and how people behave because of the, the moment of the performance and uh, we would like also to continue the, this reflection regarding what is the interruption of the living, what means the interruption of the living inside the exhibition space and what could remain over the, the archives or this kind of elements that also talking about the living inside the museum. So it was a kind of a process we continue and I will finish by uh, building up this, uh, this territory we used a long time ago to do some other things. Would you like to do it one more time? No. <laughs> <laughs> For us tonight, please. No, not today, <laughs> but maybe in two years or so. Two years is enough time to recover. <laughs> <laughs> now that I know what it is, yeah. I think it's going to be very different though with other yeah. people. Yes. If it is, a, yeah. So mm -hmm. that, yes. Yeah. Or look harder to it. <laughs> yes, it's kind of a, also different attention asked to the audience because you can go walk around and leave, or you can stay five minutes and say it's not mm. enough interesting that I'm supposed to stay. And also, <laughs> it's uh, it's the same for for the dancers. Also, that because of this deception, they are, that you are also discovering. And it's a, it's a process. Mm -hmm. It's an experimentation exactly for them. It's why we discuss at the beginning. You will not do the work of art exactly. You will experiment something, and th this experimentation will be for you also. And it, it's it's the, also the, the practice, it's the dance, dance, it's experimentation. You, you are not all your career at the top, so you experiment your skills always, sometimes down, sometimes up. So it's a, a way to fit also with this aspect of, uh, of the practice of the body. Yeah, now that you say this, and in relation to your question, I also think that um, moving from dance in the proscenium, like in the theater, and bringing dance to the gallery, not necessarily from uh, the visual art uh, side of it, but like dance. Um, it, it's interesting to, um, well, in, in relation to that, it's interesting to have the wall because it's also protection towards objectification of the body. Like with that, lots of other, I have done like a lot of work within gallery and museum settings and there, 
especially when uh, the body is mutated. And I, don't, I mean, of course, movement is a language, but if we think like that the, the person doesn't speak and that's just perform, and then you go, you have people passing by and you just become very easily performers feel and it can be, become like very strongly objectified. Whereas here, I think that it was very successfully uh, dealt with. Like mm. there was no moment that felt really objectified. And that is one of the biggest problems when you move dance into the museum or to a gallery. Okay. And just to finish, this work is also connected with another work in Kassel. That is a scène à l'italienne. And in Kassel, it's not a, a living uh, piece, but it's a, it's a stage. It's a stage, a slope stage we had in the uh, Italian style theater from the Renaissance. So the, in this case, it's an open space that the audience can practice. And there is no show or, or performance on it. It's just a, a space for the audience and uh, the, to, to have the, the experimentation of the slope this time. So, and it's a given dimension this time. It's interesting also in the context of the history of ballet, movement was very different from the Balshoi, which was a huge stage, so, you know, um, movement was grown, and so this notion of uh, limiting um, mm -hmm. the space or, uh, you know, yes. controlling the space to produce, it's really interesting. It's, uh, the way upside down. Yes, exactly, mm -hmm. from this project. Can I ask a question? Uh, as in the choreography, since it's not visual. Did you need to make things more intense so that you will have more sound for the people outside? Did it, these affects finally the, the, the intensity of the choreography, the fact that you don't have visuality? In this is what choreography, of course, we use uh, movements that also could produce some sounds. They're still walking and producing, but sometimes also we, we regulate the movements because also we like or we don't like this movement visually. And sometimes we regulate also the, the sounds. And sometimes, for instance, we ask also the dancer not to make so much sounds mm -hmm. because it was a practice of the body that makes it, and we say, no, at some moment it's too much. So it was a kind of double uh, consideration when we build the choreography. But at the beginning, it was much more displacement and things like that. And after, sometimes we decided to change some movement because they were not interesting. And sometimes we changed because they, they were not producing the sound we would like also to have at this moment. So it was combining these elements of the practice. But they are not doing uh, fake, fake sounds. It's always the produced by, by the practice, the displacement of the body. And how was the floor? How much was it? This floor? Hard. It's not, it's, it's not a floor about, uh, about dance, uh, but we have protection to the knees, the elbows, yeah. uh, because uh, you cannot do it uh, a lot. And that's why we cannot do it for more than three days per week. And uh, we do it with shoes, and uh, the shoes uh, with the wooden floor is a bit dangerous about uh, the knees because it can, can stuck and uh, have problems. And uh, mm -hmm. about the what you asked, uh, we have uh, it was also important about the energy, hearing how many people uh, are out because sometimes there are a lot of people talking. Uh, you we hear cell phones. So we give more energy, <laughs> and sometimes it was cooler. So uh, the energy was it was like more uh, melodic, let's say. <laughs> ah, there was a relation at last between the. Mm -hmm. It was not yeah. visual, Actually, but there was a lot of projection mm -hmm. from one side to the other side. Actually, sometimes I was a bit furious when I was hearing when I was hearing people talking about other pieces and not the. <laughs> I felt that we were more important, so <laughs> sometimes yes, I was a bit curious while I was hearing like, 
Some people talking about the pieces around them, not about us. <laughs> or giving us the, uh, the attention that uh, we deserve. And uh, something important about uh, uh, being on stage or in the box, uh, when we did the rehearsals, uh, we realized that uh, the result is different because we didn't know what exactly we were doing. And we realized that uh, dancing it like uh, you are in a box uh, hasn't the, the, the best result. So we realized that uh, when we dance like uh, we were on stage, but uh, doing it inside here, the result was better, the sound, the connection, the, uh, the feelings, you know, it, it like, uh, I remember Annie, sometimes that when we did one hour uh, really on stage, like we were on stage, uh, she was very surprised and uh, she felt the energy outside. Mm -hmm. It's um, strange what we say because it plays a bit with this convention of uh, uh, time also, time that is spent uh, in relation to dance and time that is spent in relation to what we would refer to as visual arts. Because to most of the works in this venue you would spend approximately one to two minutes. So if a person spends one to two minutes here that feels like not enough commitment towards a, a, a choreography mm -hmm. while it's really as much time to any other work uh, in the show um, because I mean people take it in uh, and they take it in probably intensely or they take in the disappointment of having no sound because that's also definitely part of the reality and then and then that is that and they move on and they they take this idea about the not seeing while seeing the other things so there that relation does exist but it's very frustrating to make a, a, a commitment towards time um, mm -hmm. because you spend a lot on creating it but you get very little from the visitor which is not also not really usual in, in performance or dance mm -hmm. because but it's good that we were protected actually from that. This is what I was saying earlier, also from objectification, but also from these like people just passing by, mm. uh, throw a glance at you and then leave. Like so, we didn't know that. That it was good. In that sense, we have stories to tell about the reaction of the of the visitors. There are many, many times that they found a way to communicate with you. Oh, they were yeah. not. Oh, no, they, no, they, they were not in the walls. Uh, they were not in the walls. Uh, they they were not in the walls. And they throw things in the <laughs> yeah, Once they <laughs> throw 20 cents. <laughs> they throw 20 cents. Like from the. Yeah. 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 I was thinking, sorry, you came in late, of course you must have said everything, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll risk. Um, even if there was a people, even if the slightest uh, way in was possible, then the relationship to the duration of the show would have been different. Because as you said, um, I mean, often we sit through uh, a duration of project, and that is, is durational. Uh, because that develops and you have to see it and you are getting into the duration of the piece and then you see through. But here, um, the duration of dance was completely changed, I suppose, because this was like a living object rather than a durational, um, a durational art project. So uh, even if there was one people and people would be queuing to just see what, people then would be at least aware of the duration of project, whereas now uh, they were not. Uh, if, even the slight uh, 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 insight in uh, would have changed the whole thing completely in terms of duration as well. Uh, there is a camera there, Boba. It's, it's not working. No, 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 it's not working, yes. <laughs> it was a very mirror. Yes, they used that as a mirror in order to see outside. Yes, okay. yes. <laughs> <laughs> So some people who had a way in, you know, yes. found a way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what you are talking about something, the sound produces also the, the fantasy. Mm. And uh, if you have uh, some sounds coming from the body, 
Yeah, no, it's not exactly that. that <laughs> you can also have a, a kind of a image that comes to your mind. Yeah. And it, it's supposed to be uh, something different regarding our past, our experience. Yeah. And, uh, and so from this moment, of course, you start to be in the choreography by the, the fantasy, but also you engage a kind of duration also of that, because you start to open the box and, uh, in, uh, and you start also to compose something. And that's one purpose of the piece. At some point, we return to the visual aspect that when you propose something visual, there is possibilities of interpretation, but you see what you see. In this case, you see what you have in, in your head, and you transform a little bit the, the possibility of the, of the choreography by your personality. Yeah, it just, uh, you don't get the sense of the narrative, the duration of narrative, so you might as well like a uh, sound installation. You go mm -hmm. in, you go out. Whereas if it is uh, a, a musical piece, even if it's a sound musical piece, you sort of create a narrative and you stay through. Mm -hmm. so it's a, a, a duration of project, so the images will be the project. Mm -hmm. As a duration of it, it completely changes our durational... Uh, can, can I, I think you can point out social duration in the first place. And I think in terms of coming back to the notion of a museum space, there has been a trend. I was, uh, for example, how performance goes back into the museum, it has to become long durational performance, so to attract the attention. And here, strangely enough, you do attract the attention uh, by extending the time, the length of the performance, doing a long durational performance, which is not visible paradoxically. So somehow in the genealogy discussion, maybe there is this kind of long durational performance. Sure. Think about Abramovich and long duration. She was talking oh, about that extending one performance in oh, eight the, hours. There is this trend in the museum yeah. done by artists. And stuff. That's mostly the origin. Uh, Chris, Chris Berber, for example, uh, mm -hmm. was uh, staying in the museum for a long time. Uh, there, there is uh, then a bit later. Um, Santiago Sierra, who uh, uh, involved people that were living in the museum. And um, so there is different um, kind of experience to, to introduce living um, in, in a space in which you, you usually not uh, take care about this, uh, this dimension that's just uh, ob objects. And, uh, it's, it's a way to also put in uh, tension uh, these two uh, perceptions. So. Yes, but uh, it, when we did this experience before, it said, we realized that uh, a body, a dancer, who is really trained, can give you four hours of energy in one shot. And uh, without uh, posing or without going uh, to smoke or toilets, <laughs> and uh, it, it's something given by the body. So this four hours it, here, it's also a practice timing that goes inside practice of the opening hours of the space. So it's a, it's also an introduction of a of a reality. Also, it's not to, to have a kind of duration more or less, it's really something that the body can give you. And uh, when Nikos was telling the choreography, it was really uh, mm -hmm. physical, engaged like this. So, mm -hmm. it's just like you work with the dancers, it's choreography, so it's very specific to uh, dance. Yes, yes. yes. With the practice, I would say. Mm -hmm. with the practice. Yeah. What the practice can, can yeah. give and can also. Uh, uh, propose as a, uh, an evolution because the practice should not stay uh, the same, should completely uh, embrace new, new territory, new, new configuration. And I think here we, we, we are really in a junction of uh, a dance practice and a visual art, art practice, curatorial practice, which are combined and uh, find a new way to uh, um, Offer an experience to both the the, the visitors and, and the, uh, the dancer or the, the people involved. But I think also in that case, visitor and dancer 
are less and less different. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like you said, the hamster or the mouse. I think the visitor are yeah. also the mouse of the experiment. <laughs> you are just a bit more involved eventually. You are paid, they pay the entrance. <laughs> So, you know, everything is very relative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, it's a tough picture.